Hi everyone, this is Rachel Caruso, your guide into integrative shamanism. Today we're going to talk about loneliness and also the hidden gems in being alone. And so you can learn to be alone without the element of loneliness. These are two distinct things that we'll get to. Um, so I am outside hiking, so if you hear some birds in the background or the crunch under my feet, that's what it is. Nature sounds. But anyways, getting back to our topic. So loneliness is something that most people will face in this lifetime. No, scratch that. Everyone will face it in this lifetime, but most people will face it predominantly. It'll be a predominant theme. And especially for TIs, for targeted individuals. So maybe you're, you've been through MK Ultra and that's why you're a TI, or maybe you haven't gone through the whole full programming of MK Ultra, but you're still a TI. But TIs are intentionally isolated. There are a lot of resources used in order to isolate you. That can be physically and or just to give you a sense of isolation. So learning to be on your own without feeling lonely is so crucial to TIs, especially because your life path is one of the solo warrior. This is your soul's purpose in this life. And if you struggle with loneliness, you'll likely feel a little bit disappointed at hearing somebody say your life purpose is to be on your own. Or if you're ready to embrace your life purpose, you might feel a sense of relief in that. Like, I thought so. <laughs> Genuine TIs are targeted because they are different, because they're different from the collective society, because they are more progressive thinkers, they think outside of the box, their consciousness works differently and they don't settle for the status quo, which to this day is quite toxic. TIs can see where things are not right where they are not aligned with God. They can see what's lacking integrity, what goes against human life or life itself. And they don't stand for it. They know this is not okay. And trying to fit in with society and settle for this toxicity is so painful to them. And they might try it because they have been invalidated so often by society, by narcissists around them, or people who just don't get it. People who are asleep, who surrounds them and they invalidate others. They're invalidating the TI. And so with a lot of invalidation, you start to doubt yourself and think, well, maybe I am the problem. Maybe there is some way that I'm supposed to fit in. And if I did something differently, then I could. But you will find if you try that at some point, it will not work at all. And you'll reach a breaking point of suffering. So you'll reach your, your critical mass points of suffering and dysfunction. You'll realize this literally does not function for me and in my life. And then you'll shed it and be on your own again. And you might, even though you realize you are in the right, you are living aligned with your soul, you might still feel lonely. Now, anybody who has suffered narcissistic abuse in their personal sphere. I covered in my recent video on narcissism, the hidden pandemic, that we all suffer narcissistic abuse through the powers that want to be. But it takes another toll on you if that shows up predominantly in your personal life. 
So the more intimate the relationship, the more impact, the more devastation and lasting trauma that narcissistic abuse has on you. And narcissists isolate you. They cut down your self-esteem. They shrink your world. They fill you with self-doubt. And so being with a narcissist is lonely. And the narcissist makes it so that they are your only source for all of your needs. Even though they don't fulfill them properly, fully, consistently, or genuinely, they'll only do certain things on a superficial level for the purpose to manipulate you. It's not genuine. But you become addicted to it. You become hooked to it. Because that's all that you've been getting. And the narcissist has you believing that you'll only get it from them. And so this is also where the trauma bond comes into play. The the back and forth of, you know, they'll give you little breadcrumbs of what you need. And condition you to believe that you're not worth more. And you won't find more elsewhere. And so, and they'll oscillate between these breadcrumbs and just more hostile forms of abuse. It's all part of the cycle of abuse though. So none of it is healthy. But being with a narcissist and this, whether it's your parents, whether it's a romantic partnership, a friendship, being with them is lonely, but you'll end up settling for it and thinking this is the best that there is and then if you try to leave the narcissist when you realize the toxicity and you realize that this is a dysfunctional relationship it does not function and you try to leave you get hit with a deep loneliness and actually People on average return to a toxic relationship. I think there was a study for romantic partnerships. On average, people return to that abusive relationship seven times. Now the trauma bond comes into play, but interwoven with that is the loneliness. But even when you are successful, fully leaving the narcissist, Maybe you'll end up going back in the future. Maybe you won't. But when you do leave and you have this sense of permanency to that ending of the relationship within you, you will still feel very lonely. And it's because you're fully facing the impact of the abuse, the devaluation, the, the minimal self-esteem, lack of confidence, lack of hope, all the self-doubt and second-guessing yourself. And you might go through cycles of second-guessing yourself about uh, leaving the relationship. You're likely to feel lonely because very few people understand what you're going through with the narcissist. They don't understand the dynamics of narcissism. They don't understand the impact that abuse has on a person and the cycles of abuse and and how it hijacks your body, mind, and soul. And so in trying to share your experience, to share your feelings, to seek support, And being invalidated or not understood or gaslit from other people, that can contribute to your sense of loneliness. Or perhaps the narcissist had isolated you so much, you have nobody to turn to for support. And that will also bring you this sense of loneliness. And seeing, witnessing narcissism up close and personal can leave you wondering what the hell is wrong with humanity wondering if there is any good in the world if there are any genuine people in the world and you know 
are there genuine benevolent people who also understand what the fuck is up on our planet who understands the levels of control and abuse that we've been put under and so you might be feeling very pessimistic very cynical that there's not enough good people in the world or even just even just understanding that there might be and maybe you've met them before maybe you you haven't met them yet and still witnessing the level of evil that comes with narcissists that may be enough for you to question your desire to be on this planet do you want to share this planet with an evil this dark and so that also creates a sense of loneliness hopelessness and loneliness can really go hand in hand because when you feel that sense of hopelessness in part it may be because you don't feel that there is enough support from the light that there is enough goodness to personally support you on your journey awakening to the depths of evil and recovering from it becoming empowered so you can stand up and wield the sword of light and truth so if you sense that lack of support coupled with this hopelessness that is going to amount to loneliness so targeted individuals are subjected to narcissistic abuse you know the program you've been put under or put into that's been designed that's been executed by narcissists it's only narcissists who participate in that and that organized abuse can find its way in your immediate sphere and especially if you are mk ultra then absolutely you have handlers even if maybe you're at the stage in your healing an awakening where they're just wannabe handlers <laughs> they don't you see them for what they are and you don't let them into your life but you know there's different there's different stages of awareness and healing and nobody is perfect <laughs> we'll all be duped even if you have been you know healing and becoming empowered for decades there will be times when when you are deceived and that's not on you that's on the trickster and so my point is no matter who you are if you're a targeted individual you will have personal narcissism in your life you will have narcissists creating personal relationships with you trying to and hopefully you get into the habit of spotting it and ending it quicker and quicker, earlier and earlier in the relationship. But that is to say that everything that I've been talking about with narcissism, if you're a TI, this affects you too. And I bet if you're not a TI, this affects more people who currently realize it. Check out my introductory video on narcissism. I'll link it in the corner of this video here. It's called Narcissism what it is and why you need to learn about it because I really explore how narcissism affects everyone so I implore you the listener to learn about narcissism and consider how it might be affecting you and how it might be creating loneliness in your life and it's not the only thing that creates loneliness I think it's part of a human's journey in this lifetime at this point in time it's part of our journey so there's nothing wrong with you for feeling lonely but I also want you to know that it doesn't have to plague you it doesn't have to weigh you down you can heal learn a different lifestyle and learn a different perspective so that loneliness isn't a predominant feeling or force in your life so i'll tell you a little story about my journey with loneliness and the key perspective 
that shifted everything for me. So a couple years ago, when I was searching for answers on recovering from narcissism, like at that point I had learned a lot about narcissism channeled through spirit and through myself. But after I understood the dynamics of it, then I was on the mend. Um, I had extricated myself out of the UK government's trafficking system. They were using the asylum system and the national referral mechanism to completely control and traffic me. So, you know, I was held in prison camps and all of that is on my whistle blowing channel called No Witness. You'll see that link in the description box below. But so after I extricated myself from all of that, I was then set on just healing. You know, I was cleansing the poison out of my system and then doing the work to heal. So I was ready for the next stage after leaving all that toxicity. And I wasn't finding sufficient answers in my, I was, you know, looking online and listening to psychologists who specialize in narcissism and survivors of narcissistic abuse who are now coaches and nothing they were saying was enough. What they mostly said they, when they addressed loneliness was you just have to feel it. And they also talk about, you know, healing the or correcting the codependent patterns within yourself which enable you to be entangled with a narcissist and they all said to recover from narcissistic abuse and to fill this void within you that comes with codependency you have to just sit with the feeling of loneliness and I was like, the fuck, that's the answer. I've been, I've been sitting with all of my feelings, the most painful feelings, fully for years. And that includes loneliness. I've been sitting with this feeling forever. <laughs> and they would say, you know, yeah, it takes a while, um, but over time it gets better. And, you know, at that point I was like, it's been a good five years <laughs> that I've been feeling and completely embracing my feeling of loneliness and it has not gotten better. But just recently, I was giving a session to a MK Ultra survivor who is, of course, she's been subjected to narcissistic abuse and she's learning about that dy dynamic and how to extricate herself from it and to heal. And so we addressed the feelings of loneliness and I was encouraging her that there will be another side to this that yes it will be painful to leave a toxic narcissistic relationship and to be completely on your own you will go through pain and it must be felt and that's part of healing but I wanted her to know there's another side you won't be cursed with all of that pain forever. Those were words of genuine encouragement from me. I hadn't realized that I had reached that point in my own life where the loneliness had pretty much vanished. And I was surprised because I was like, oh wow, I remember a time in my life uh, when somebody would tell me that, <laughs> that the loneliness will end or all I have to do is feel it. I wanted to slap the person. <laughs> I was like, feeling this is not making it better. And so then I was like, wow, so I don't feel that way anymore. The loneliness that had plagued me all my life, and especially whenever I started to feel my feelings fully, it's lifted a lot. And it's, it's not to say that it's completely gone, but it doesn't plague me. It doesn't weigh me down. And so then I got to reflecting on why that is? What was the shift for me? What was the healing point for me? And so this was my formula for resolving the loneliness that I want to share with you because I don't think it's exclusive to me. 
this is something that can apply to anybody. The essence of healing that loneliness was to stop trying to fit in, to stop looking to society, to any communities, to any outsider for their ideals of how to live, how to feel, how to be, and to accept that I am on a path completely unique to me and it may look completely new and foreign and strange to everybody else, but that does not matter. And so I was able to reach this point after just continuously going within, like deep within myself, to learn who my soul is. What are my values? How do I want to live my life? Who am I? Like on a very deep level. And then finding the actions and the lifestyle that matches that. And then just living it. And when you're recovering from insecurity, it can be hard to find that place deep within you to validate it and to have the bravery to execute those decisions about who you are, what kind of life you want to live. It takes bravery, it takes confidence. And so this was something that I did repeatedly over years. Really, especially, you know, from my time in the prison camps. So mostly for the last two years. And the other key factor to why I was pushed into that and what helps to resolve the loneliness was recognizing that nobody was coming to save me. Nobody was going to help me. I had no support. And up until a year or two ago, that crippled me. That felt devastating to me. It felt so depressing. I would be angry, I'd be depressed hopeless but things kept getting worse and worse and worse you know like being held in a prison camp for two years undergoing extreme torture and I wore myself out trying to get help and the system was so controlled with those camps that the only people I could find were corrupt so they certainly weren't helping me and even if I did find somebody who wasn't corrupt, the chances that they would have believed me or understood what was happening was very slim. So I had to take full responsibility for myself, for overcoming the worst challenges. And some of the obstacles, some of those challenges were life-threatening. So I had to routinely remember to surrender my life to God. So that also meant becoming okay with my own death, realizing that I would not be free, the suffering would not cease if I continued on with the way things were. And so I understood there was a threat of death and I accepted that risk. I accepted that living aligned with my soul living aligned with God and ending this perpetual cycle of unimaginable suffering for not just me, but for many other people involved with MK Ultra, like the other, the other victims in the prison camps. I decided that the threat of death was worth it. And so I accepted the worst case scenario. I made peace with it and I gave my life over to God. I put my life in God's hands. I was like, I'm, I'm going to do the best that I can do. I'm going to live according to truth while protecting myself the best I can. But ultimately, my life was given to me by God. And it is a higher power which determines when I leave this earth. And so I became okay with that too. And so do you see how I found support from the highest source, from the truest source, from the infinite source of God. So when I was feeling like there was no support on the earthly realm, I understood 
that there was a higher support and that it does work through the earthly realm. But this earthly realm is not the source of my support. And so I was opening up to different possibilities of how this support might manifest in my life while also accepting that it might not come from outside. And you know what, for the most part, to this day, it has not come from an outside source. And so part of recovering from the depths of loneliness was learning that I am my own support and that disaster will not happen if I live my life on my terms at my own pace because I'm still here. The worst case scenarios I've been fearing have not come to pass and I accept that I don't know the future. I don't know if they will come to pass, but I'm okay with that if they do, but I'm living in the present moment. So do you see how fear of catastrophe, fear of you know your worst fears, the worst case scenarios for you, that can create a sense of loneliness. If you feel like you don't know how you'll get through it, or if the whole world is against you, which is a very common feeling for a TI, because there quite literally is a global organized network who is against you. But they are not in charge of your life, God is. But you know, when you're in the thick of it as a TI, and even if you're not a TI, you might be experiencing something similar. When it feels like the world is against you and you fear the worst case scenarios and you have a real belief that they will come to pass and you see no source of support or help, that creates this feeling of loneliness. So I found for me, so much of what I was wanting was validation and support. And not receiving that from any source outside of me made me feel lonely. So I was literally on my own. So I learned, you know, if I want something, I'm going to have to give it to myself. So just validating my uniqueness that much more. Validating everything which has me on my own. All of my true essence which has created a life where I am a lone soldier or a solo warrior, all of those things are rights within me. They're good, they're valuable, they're powerful. And then for my support, it was it's mostly about turning to that higher power, but also advocating for myself, standing up for myself, setting strong boundaries, knowing or learning what I truly deserve, that I do deserve good things. I do deserve abundance. I started to pursue what I knew was rightfully mine. And I leaned on God to support me in that. So in essence, for me and for many of you listening, healing the loneliness is about accepting that you are on a solo path. It's ending the resistance to your divine destiny. Did you consider that there is a reason that you're on your own and it's good? It's good for you and it's good for everyone else. So especially for TIs, you are on the solo path so that you can remain clear and separate from everybody else, from everything else. So it's this strong boundary so that you can maintain this connection, this pure connection to yourself and to your unique gifts without it being tampered with or influenced by other people. And it's also a role of leadership. A leader is in this, you know, with a TI leader, you are put out in front to lead new paths, to create new paths. And if you're envisioning this, you know, somebody with a big hatchet clearing out a path in the woods or in the jungle so that their tribe can follow, so that their tribe has a clearing 
to get from point A to point B, to get from the old to the new. If you visualize that, obviously, that leader is out in front. There's nobody beside them, but their support comes from the people who actually are relying on them. So out in front, with no one next, right next to them, they are alone in a way. They stand alone. They stand out. But there's a difference between being on your own, standing alone, and being without support, and being lonely. And the more you accept your path, the more validated you feel, the more supported you feel, and that loneliness starts to melt away. You're no longer invalidating yourself for being on your own. So the more you embrace your uniqueness, no matter who you are, whether you're a TI or not, if you struggle with loneliness, the more you embrace your uniqueness and don't look outside yourself for validation and support, then the less lonely you'll feel. And I'm going to make a separate video to really elaborate on the solo warrior path of the TI to really clarify why you are on your own and why that's a good thing for you and everyone else and how you can embrace it to be fulfilled, to be empowered and to be happy. So stay tuned for that video coming up shortly, but I hope this video helped anybody who wants to find the resolution to severe loneliness. There is a solution. And as somebody who's struggled with it for years, and reasonably so, like there, there were so many valid reasons why I would feel lonely. And there are valid reasons for why you're feeling the way you do. But as somebody who struggled with it and who couldn't find the answers that I was looking for, this was a large part of my process. <laughs> and this is so beautiful. If only I had a camera, a cat just ran up to me and just started caressing my legs. <laughs> Talk about connection and ending the loneliness imprints. Hi, kitty. Hi. Oh, just imagine the cutest, softest, sweetest cat <laughs> just snuggling up against me. A random cat from the street. <laughs> so take it from me that the imprint can be resolved no matter how much you were struggling with this and maybe this video helped you and maybe it didn't but i have faith that you will find the answers you need from within you like i had to do for myself so thank you for tuning in and i'll catch you in the next video namaste